All right, so we've been talking about, we talked about some special patterns. We talked about, um, we reviewed putting it, in, putting it in the box. We talked about sum and difference of two cubes. We talked about grouping, which is where we slashed it. <laughs> so today I want to show you quadratic form, and I want to talk about um, factoring <laughs> completely. So quadratic form, if it's in quadratic form, that means I can put it in the box. Okay, we just have to be very careful about how we put it in the box. But we have to recognize, you know how we have to recognize, Bryce, the um, perfect square trinomial? This is the same kind of thing. We have to recognize the pattern, okay? And the pattern is that you will have some number front. Let's see. And let's say 7x squared. The first exponent, for it to be in quadratic form, the first exponent has to be even. Okay? And the second exponent yeah. has to be half of the first. And the last, I'm telling you what quadratic form means. Quadratic form means when you write it this way that the first exponent is even, the middle exponent is half of the first exponent, and the last number doesn't have a variable on it at all. It's just a constant. Okay? Hold on. Oh, Lord. I think... Correct. And the last one has to be just a number. And if you think we've been doing this, this is what the quadratics look like. Um, we were putting things in the box that looked like 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. The first exponent's even, the middle exponent's half of that, the last exponent, I mean, the last number's a constant, okay? So we were already doing that. Now we're just kind of upping it a little bit. If it meets this, we can put it in the box and factor it, and I'm fixing to show you how, Okay. You sure? All right, so let's put this one in the box. I've got 5x to the 4th. Remember, it was 5x to the 4th plus, right, plus 2. What, what? Was the other thing I had to be talking about? Hold on. <coughs> I, this doesn't go with the problem. I was just saying we've already done ones that look like that. And that's still quadratic form. All right, so if that's 2, so that's 7, I have to be 1. Right, and there's an imaginary 1 there. Uh, uh, yeah, that's okay, so if I put this, the difference now is, notice the exponents, right? But I'm going to put it in the box, and I'm going to go through the exact same process I went through before. So first term, first box. Last term, last box, right? Now, what did we do at this point? Multiply them together. So now think about this and think about what you know about multiplying and adding. It's got to multiply to 10x to the 4th. Exactly. But it's got to add to what? 7x squared. So Brady said 5 and 2, and he's right. This time, instead of just x, it's going to be 5x squared and 2x squared. Whatever this is in the middle, that's what this exponent is going to be. Wait, I, I thought that's not what we just did. I thought we had to do it in half. That is in half. That's half of four. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah of the first column. In other words, biggest thing I can divide both of them by. Not just 5x, but this time 5x squared. And how about here? 2. And now let's go across. How about the GCF there? x squared. And how about here? 1. Does that make sense? This is all we got to do. We're going to tack something onto it in just a minute, but just wait. All right, so I got 5x squared plus 2, x squared plus 1. Do you see that the, the pattern is the same? The, the method is the same. It's just 
a little bit more complicated because of the exponents. Yes? Right, can we do like another one just like that before you add anything else? Yes, yes. Um, let's do... Let's do this one. X to the sixth plus 5X squared plus 6. So all the... I thought we just had to do the... Oh, of it. it is. It's supposed to be 3. I apologize. Thank you. All right. So as I look at this... It's only going to say to factor. So my job's going to be to look at this. Nathan, that phone is not going to pass this test for you, buddy. You are way more focused on that than this. All right. So my job is to determine, is it a special pattern? Can I put it in the box? What can I do with it exactly? So as I look at this and I notice that it's got three terms to it, I need to know, I mean, is it a perfect square trinomial? In other words, are the n's perfect squares? Does it multiply and double? Yes. No. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. So can I put it in the box? The only way to put it in the box is if it's quadratic form. Is it quadratic form and why? Yeah, because it has 6 and then half of 6 is 3. And Several of you are saying it, and you're absolutely right. 6 is even, 3 is half of 6, and 6 on the end is a constant. So let's put it in the box. What are my signs going to look like? X, 6, 6. But what are the signs going to be? 6. No, like these signs. Positive, positive, right? So I don't have to keep up with signs. So tell me the two things that multiply to 6x to the 6th, but add to 5x to the 3rd. 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Yes. Yes. That's it. Because when you add that together, you get 5x to the third. When you multiply it together, you get 6x to the sixth. Righty? You with me? All right. Up and over. GCF. X cubed. How about here? Three. Well, the six doesn't have an x, so don't pull an x. That's okay. How about here? And here. <coughs> x cubed minus, um, plus 3 and x cubed plus 2. So this is pretty easy to everybody. Same thing we've been doing in the box. It's just my exponents are a little bit bigger now. I gotta add one more thing to it. Well, what you gotta add before you start adding? Let me show you. What we're gonna do, it's not a new method at all. It's called factoring completely. Okay, so we're gonna use all the methods that we've learned so far, right, Jalen? We're going to use the box. We're going to use difference of two squares, sum and difference of two cubes. And what's going to happen when we break things down is sometimes, in other words, let's say I had x to the fourth minus 16. Do you recognize what that pattern is? Huh? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Do you recognize that pattern? It should be number one on that sheet of patterns I gave you. What's the pattern? What's it what? called? If I needed to factor this, what is this pattern called? What did you give me? That's what I'm asking you, is what did I give you? you oh, the getting, sheet, that yeah. sheet at the top says factoring and solving polynomial, and it's squares? got, yes. It's got all the different ones named on it. Hold, Bryce, do you have it, or you can hold it up and show the other Bryce what we're talking about? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, yes. This is the one where if they're both perfect squares and there's a minus in the middle. I can break them apart. I can do one plus and one minus. What's the square root of x to the fourth? Or what times itself twice gives you x to the fourth? One what? 
1 x squared. And what times itself twice gives you 16? 4. Four. So I do 1 plus and 1 minus. Here's what factoring completely means, because you already know how to do that. Now, when I factor completely, it's not enough just to do it one time and be done. We have to check all the parentheses to see if we can do anything again. So as I look at this, do you see either one of those sets of parentheses that I could break down another time? Yes. Which one? Both. Both? Yeah, you add four. But when it squares, it can only be difference of two squares. They're the same thing. Look. Do you see that that's another difference of two squares? No. I don't really know what you're asking about. <laughs> okay. When we started with this, right, we broke it down into these two pieces, right? Because they're both perfect squares and it's separated by a minus sign. Well, now when I look at what I factored, these are both perfect squares separated by a minus sign. So this one, I could break down again. Now this one I can't because it's plus. But this one can break down again. You see what I'm saying? You keep on breaking it down until you can't break it down any further. That's what factoring completely means. It means factoring... Then you'll never end. No, I have ended now. You ain't ended because you can break down that 2 to 1. You can break down what, Bryce? 2 to 1. That's not perfect square. It's got to be one of the patterns on your sheet or able well, to put it in the so box. What am I going to do it if it's 24 up there? Then you would say it's already factored completely if it's a perfect square. But 24 is not a perfect square, so you couldn't do it. Watch another one. Watch another one. You are, because you're doing the same thing. You're looking at the pieces and going, okay, if I gave you just that, how would you factor it? Well, you'd do x minus 2, x plus 2. If I gave you just that, you'd say, oh, that can't be factored because that's a plus. So I just wrote it. Why can't it be factored? It's Bec a plus. He's going to factor minus. He's correct. But I don't know why. Only factor minus is when it squares. If it's cubes, uh -oh. then you do the little parentheses, big parentheses, same change plus. Oh, my Lord. Let's do another one. This works with anything that we do. Factoring completely does its, its any pattern. Let's do this one. x to the third plus 7x squared minus 9x minus 63. So you're running through the same thought process every single time you factor. The first thing you want to know is, can I take out a GCF? Can you take a GCF out of everything? No. 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 So the second thing you want to ask is, is it a special pattern? Is it one of those patterns listed on that sheet that I gave you? Now look at that sheet, Brady. Is it one of those patterns? No. Yes, which one is it? Yes, it is. Look. Look at what's on the board and look at that sheet. Which one does it look like? Factor by grouping. Oh. There's four pieces, yes? Sure. Everybody look at number five on that sheet. Factor by grouping. If it's a grouping, what do I do to factor it? That's right, Andrew. Slash. Ooh, Andrew got you on that one. Slash, right? Yeah. When I slash, what do I take out of the first two? x squared, the greatest common factor. You're right, Shane, the greatest common factor, which is x squared. What's left? Seven. What's that? <laughs> x, say it the other way. X plus seven. It is the same thing, but I want to keep it in order. If you take x squared out of both of the first two. You got one x left, so you got to do x plus that seven right there in front of x squared. That's right. Oh, wow. 
Middle sign. Now remember, if I change, if I keep that middle sign to a, uh, yep, I got to change to the last one. So this one's going to be a plus now. Always, if the middle one's minus, always change the last one. What do I take out of those two? Nine. Nine. What's left? Nine and an x plus seven. Wait, well, and you put the x plus seven. Divide both of them by nine. Here. You put x plus seven together. You put x plus seven on the outside. And then that leaves me with x squared minus 9. Now, Friday I would have stopped here, but now that I know how... What's your question, Jordan? No, I just okay. <coughs> I do x minus 3, All right, x hold plus on. 3. 9x divided by 9 is x. So I get 63 divided by 9 is 7. I took the 9 out of that. 9x minus 3 and x plus Absolutely. Yep. You're exactly right, Brady. Probably now that I know how to... <laughs> You're a genius. Now that I know how to factor completely, what I want to do is look at each set of parentheses and say, okay, this one. Can I do anything else no, with that? No. no. There's not an exponent on the x. I can't do anything else with that. That one's done. But how about this one? Yes. 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 That's a difference of two squares. That's going to be your most common pattern to um, to come out to in factoring completely, if I can get my words out right. So a lot of you recognize that and said, yes, that's x minus 3 x plus 3. At this point, I'm factored completely. We'll solve tomorrow. Today, we're just factoring completely. Say again, Jordan. Oh, never mind. It's not That's stupid, the, Bryce. Yeah. Yeah. You have plus and minus yeah. Yes, you have to put both of them. Oh. Let's do another one. What if we put them in the same parentheses and say yeah, x plus minus 3? three. You need to do that, though. Let's do this one. <coughs> no, they're good. I'm fixed. That's what this one's going to be. Hey, I want you to do this one. And the next, I want you to have big, freaking numbers. I don't need homework things. You've been giving us it don't look nothing like this. This is what it's going to look like. All right. Remember my first step, and this should always go through your head when you factor. Can I take something out? Does it follow a special pattern? Can I put it in the box? Three steps. You have to, good job, Cheyenne. I have to take four, even bigger than four, four what? Squared. Four x squared. What would you say, Sadie? I'm sorry. They're all divisible by four, so that's why you take the four. All right, so what's left in the first one? X to the what? Fourth. Minus. Five X to the second plus just six this time because we took the X squared out. All right, now take a look because that I, I took out in GCF, right? I did you explain how. Okay, so. Each one of these coefficients can be divided by four. If you were if you were in the box and going over, what would the GCF be? What? You know how you take the GCF in the box yeah. and you go up? What would the GCF of 4, 20, and 24 be? It'd be four. It'd be four. But then you also have to take the most number of X's away from all of them that you can. So what's the most number of X's you can take? Six. Oh. No, four. Two. 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 No, no, he, I, he, uh, he, yeah. he you see what I'm saying, Bryce? No, I, I got this one down. Huh? I got this one down. Okay, you see where the 4 came from? Yeah. Now, the exponents on the x is, I want to take the most I can from every one of them. It'd be 2. It'd be 2, so that's what I came from. So you divide everything by 4, that's how you get the coefficients. And you take two x's away from everybody. So four divided by four is? Oh, zero. One. Oh, yeah, that one too. And then six minus two is four. Yeah. 20 divided by four is five. Five, yeah. And four, if you take two x's away, leaves you with two. 
You follow me? Did you come up with this in your head? No, this is a method. This is how you factor. Okay. Now, since I'm factoring completely and not just factoring by one method, I need to look at what's left in parentheses and say, can I factor it any further? Yes, you got to put in the little thing in here. This, you got to put it in the box. How do you know, Brady, that that's a box problem? Half, it's even half constant. What are the signs going to look like? X minus plus is minus minus two. Minus minus. Minus plus is minus minus. Yeah. What multiplies to 6x to the fourth but adds to 5x squared to? You keep, don't worry about the signs because at the end they're both going to be minus. All right, up and over, what's the GCF? X squared. X squared. So here you're doing the same thing that we did in the beginning where we pulled something out. That's kind of the same, same technique here. What's the biggest thing you can take out of both of them? The most number of X's and the biggest number you can divide the coefficients by. How about here? How about second column? Three. Three. How about here? X, X, squared. X squared. And how about here? Two. So now I keep the 4x squared out front because it was already there. Remember my signs are both minus. So x squared minus 3. Now we should give us a challenge. This is a challenge. You think this is easy? Can you factor it any further? Can you factor any of those pieces any further? No. Sure. No. Nope. Can't. What? What if this was a four instead of a three? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then I could do it again. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Do you see what we're looking for a little bit? Yeah, I got yes. you. So yeah. what I had the times that four by everything in that box. But nope. Just leave it. Just once you take it out, don't bother it again. All right. I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah. Can we go get our work while hot? You don't want to do one more? Oh, Let's right. do one more. You sure? Yeah. How about sum and difference of two cubes? Y'all remember that? No. Because that's going to be on there too. Sum difference of two cubes is the same change plus. Yes, no, maybe so. Let's no, we don't chill. All right, don't give us a lot of homework now. Because that's a lot of work to do for a problem. Let me do one summer difference of two cubes. The what up? Look at this one. Are we doing another one? Yeah. <coughs> We're doing a summer. Yeah. Right, you got to take, take something out. That should always be your first go to. I got to leave. I'll take two out of Andrew, what'd you say we were taking out of here? No, Oh, Caleb, what'd you say we were taking out of here? Two. two? Yeah. I say a little bit something else, too. What? 15. No, two Why something. Two, two x squared. Two x squared. <laughs> yeah. Because, Bryce, the biggest thing I can divide 16 into 50 by is two. And then I take the most number of x's away I can. This is the same one we did with that 4 and 20 problem where we took you the 4 and 20. You can't divide 250 by nothing else. 2? You can't divide 50 two. divided by 225 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the answer is 125. Come on now. It's simple. Yeah, but I'm saying it's you can't math. divide 250 by anything else besides 2. Huh? No complete argument. That's the biggest thing that goes in. All right, so look, I divide them both by 2, but I also take 2 x's away. Now, look at this. I hope you recognize, huh? I'm sorry, what? Okay. I hope you recognize these two numbers being on this list, 8 and 125. So now I'm looking at a sum of two cubes in parentheses. So now this is number what on your paper? Three. Three. It's a sum of two cubes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my goodness. 
little parenthesis, big parenthesis, same change plus. Ask again. Somebody said something. So, what time is it set? Ah. Two. Two. Oh. two. Two. Eight. Because eight to the third, I mean, eight is two to the third. So, what times itself three times oh. gives you eight x cubed? So, two x, right? Yeah. What times itself three times gives you 125? Five. Five. Okay. Now, square the first one. Square the two also, though. So, 4x squared. Or you could write it like this. Right, Brady? Square the last one. Where did what come from? <laughs> Put them together. Yeah, so it, that yep. Now, it's completely factored. 